During my early years in Europe, which was in the 80s, there were lots of events that featured blues and jazz musicians, many more than what we find today. Also, during that time, a lot of our fans were teenagers or young people. I was even invited to perform in 1985 at the Leader Summers Festival, which was a six-day event on the eastern side of Berlin of the former Deutsche Democratic Republic. We were on the other side of the wall for three days, and walking back across the border at Checkpoint Charlie was an experience I would never forget. I was traveling by foot from the eastern world back to a totally different western world. I visited the DDR often after that, and because of the government, government visa stamp in my passport, I never encountered a problem or delay while entering the country. I am still in contact with friends I became acquainted with during my first visit. After living in a rather small town of Osnabrück for all of six years, I felt that I was in need of a larger city environment, and the best choice was Berlin. Not to mention that I was also drawn to come here following the scent of romance. Two years after becoming a resident of Berlin, along with my former wife, Anya, we opened the Blue Blues Cafe Berlin. My dear friend, Angela Brown, who I met in Chicago and have played many concerts with after her move to Germany, played our opening weekend, June 1992. She also played the last weekend, October 1994. In between, she performed on the one-year anniversary when she recorded her infamous live CD with Reggie Moore on piano, the late Earl Bostick on bass, and myself for acoustic mu music records. The best way to describe the atmosphere of the Blues Cafe is, because of the American influence, you, when you entered, you were in America. When you left, you were back in Deutschland. One of Germany's most famous legendary film and song divas, the late Hildegard Knef, enjoyed being there so much that her producers filmed an evening in the Blues Cafe for her biographical documentary. The embarrassing side is that even though she had been in the club several times before, I did not realize just how famous she was until our photo was printed in the newspaper. One day in a hotel room somewhere in Germany, I was visiting my friend Angela Brown. She was playing some music that she was preparing for an upcoming album. To give you an idea of how long ago this was, she was using a cassette tape player to play the music. Anyway, as the music was playing, and as it came to the sax solo, I asked Angela, when did we do that? I don't remember that session. She replied, that is not you. I listened a little more and a bit closer, and I soon realized that even though it sounded like something that I would play, it was in fact not me. She played another song, and I told Angela, I couldn't remember doing that song either. She said again, that is not you. <laughs> when she played yet another song, I told her that I remember that session. She then told me that after I left the studio in Dusseldorf, they took me off the track, recorded a guy, and he played me note for note. Until this time, I used to wonder why I was so fortunate to be receiving saxophones from Mr. Patrick Selma, the president of Selma Paris, and the grandson of Henry Selma, who have always and still today produced the finest and best saxophones. He saw to it that I was always equipped with the newest and latest models of their instruments. Now, just as I may have been an influence on young players, I was also a young player influenced by some of the greats who came before me. One such great, I was performing with the 9th of November, 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell. That night, along with Big J. Benigni, Roy Gaines, Christian Ronnenberg, Daryl Taylor, and Donald Hyde Pocket Robinson, we were the live soundtrack as East met West for the first time in Western streets. I would like to show you an excerpt of the band that blew down the Berlin Wall. <laughs> this particular clip was recorded on November 14, 1989, in Cologne, Germany which was the last day of our six-week tour. It has been edited for this presentation. So around in the 50s, we recorded a little thing called 3D. Now you better hold all your money in your pockets and hold your seats because we're going to blow our brains out at a high rate of speed. Hey, wake up. <laughs> 
find no more diplomacy than the diplomacy that you find in romance. And when there's music in the air, it should move you, groove you, and soothe you. The ballad of your story should not be rushed, and time should reside so that you feel and experience each stroke of the touch, and every note is like a kiss.